I don't even know where to begin this sermon of this morning after the events of January 6th. How do I speak happily about baptism after the events that have rocked our nation? I posted on Facebook on Wednesday that I was appalled and that this was not America. But in reality, January 6th was America. All the rancor of the election, that's America. Watching the police slowly kill George Floyd live on Facebook, that's America. Watching the burning and looting that happened after peaceful demonstrations, that's America. And the deaths of 360,652 people as of yesterday afternoon from COVID-19, the highest rate in the world, that is America. This is America. The America that we together have created. And I can hear the objections now. I want to make them myself. We didn't do these things. We are not responsible. But if we, the people of the United States, if we, the voters, are not responsible, who is? We are responsible. We created the America that we are living in. May God help us. This morning, I read the beginning of Mark's gospel. And I wanted to start with that beginning so that we could be reminded of what started Mark's Gospel. It started with John the Baptist. It started with his baptism. And the real purpose of including John the Baptist in Mark's Gospel is the fact that Jesus' first activity in Mark's Gospel is going to John to be baptized. Now John's baptism was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And we don't think about Jesus as needing to repent, but that is the baptism that Jesus went to receive. And it's in that baptism that Jesus is claimed as God's own precious son. And it is in that baptism that the Spirit descended upon him. When we, good Christian folks, especially us good Lutherans, think about baptism, we usually think about babies and happy families. The problem is that if that's the only thing that we think about, and that is part of our tradition, is that that image alone can just domesticate what baptism really is. When Jesus was baptized, the gospel says the heavens were torn apart. And then the heaven, the, the spirit came down. And after his baptism, his life was torn apart. First, he was sent into the wilderness to face the devil and all of those temptations. And then as he began to travel around the countryside, he was facing the wrath of many for his teaching the teachings that ultimately led to his death. We must remember that Jesus was not killed for inciting an insurrection, although that is what some 
folks were saying about him. But he was killed for teaching, for healing, for welcoming the outsider, for seeing the invisible ones, for loving the unlovable. In general, for turning the priorities of the world upside down. Martin Luther encourages all believers, or encouraged, he's dead. Um, Martin Luther encouraged all believers to remember their baptism daily. And this is not to make it a, a, a light little simple thing, but for him it was experiencing the death of going into these waters, of drowning in the waters of baptism, and rising to new life. And now my hand is all wet. He encouraged us. When we wash our face, when we wash our hands, which we're doing a lot these days, or when we're just standing out in the rain to remember our baptism, because our baptism impacts every single moment of our lives. And it is to remember and to experience the radical nature of life in Christ. To look at who we are, who we really are, to tell the truth and to repent of that truth when it is not good. And to once again feel the presence of God in your midst. Because God is always with us when we're behaving well and when we're behaving badly. And God will never abandon us. That's, that's the promise. That love is the gift of God and it is our blueprint for a life of following Jesus. What we have seen in this past year is America. The America that we created together. The question now is how will we respond with more violence and more death? Or with the love that God gave us first. I'm reading a book by John Lewis, and I know I've talked about him before. And for those of you who don't know, he was um, a, he just died a, a, a few months ago. And he was a civil rights leader in the 50s and 60s. He started when he was 17 years old. Oh my gosh and uh, then became a member of Congress and was a member of Congress until he died. And the thing that, that I have heard him say and I have read several times is how the, the folks in the civil rights movement, how his group was prepared for what was to come because they knew that they would face violence. They knew that um, they were not going to be well received when they asked to sit at a lunch counter to eat when African Americans were not allowed there. And the preparation was based on one thing, love. And what he talked about, what he was taught and what he lived as the very basis of his life is that no matter what anybody else is doing, no matter what they're doing to you, he was spat upon, he had dogs sicked on him, he had fire hose opened up on him. And his response was, look the person in the eye. Because if you look someone in the eyes, you cannot deny their humanity. And it, he 
becomes more difficult to hate. The basis of love, even for those who are hurting you, even for those who are hating you, that was the basis of his work. And dare I say, fellow Christians, that it is to be the base of our lives. So on this day when we remember our baptisms, what are we going to choose? How are we going to respond, not only to January 6th, but to everything else that has happened in this horrible year? Are we going to respond with hate? Are we going to continue to feel the anger and the hurt and the destruction that destroys our own souls? Or are we going to remember what Jesus taught us? That it is about God's love that we are to be about in our lives. Because God so loved the world, not hated the world, loved the world, that he gave his only son so that all might live. Now it's our choice. 